AI has completely disrupted the tech job market. You believe they can understand? Yes. And so human beings will be the second most intelligent beings on the planet. Yeah. Developers are afraid of being replaced, and even teenagers are literally coding entire apps purely off vibes with vibe coding. You can even code on the go right from your smartphone. People are starting to wonder, is it still worth learning to code in 2025? I started coding when I was about 12 years old with Code Academy. 16 years later, I've now coded dozens of apps. I co-founded EZA, which is one of the biggest apps in Web3. But there's something that not enough people are talking about. If you're a talented engineer, AI isn't going to replace you because you are a better software engineer than AI. So in this video, I'm making the case for why coding is still one of the most valuable skills that you can learn in 2025 and potentially in your whole life. And I think that the best place to start looking at it is more broadly and to ask, what is the actual goal of learning how to code or maybe put better, learning how to build software? Every time that we have a technological disruption, people question the value of learning particular things. When calculators came around, people started to ask, why learn maths? When Google became mainstream, people asked, why do I need to know facts? Why do I need to learn anything? I'll just look them up whenever I need them. And with AI now, it's sort of like, why do I need to learn really anything? It's like the final form. Like I've thought about this quite a lot lately. And I think that this question goes much deeper than just coding itself. It really actually touches on what it means to be a human. Because knowledge isn't just about having access to information. Life isn't just a trivia night where you can pull off obscure facts to win a prize. It's more like a video game. It's a series of problems and challenges that get harder and harder and harder. And learning is all about how information shapes your ability to think. There's this amazing clip of Steve Jobs from The Lost Interview where he says something really profound. I think everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. So it's not just about the code itself, it's about the thinking process that you develop by learning how to code. And Albert Einstein also expressed a similar idea that I absolutely love, which said, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. There's also another saying, which is that education is what you know after you've forgotten what you learned at school. And that's really the value in learning how to code. It's not about memorizing syntax or even being able to write an app from scratch without any help whatsoever. It's about developing a way of thinking, a way of solving problems, breaking complex challenges into small parts, identifying patterns, thinking logically, and then creating the solutions step by step along the way. Because if you don't know how, and you use something like AI to do it for you, then it can actually lead to pretty dangerous outcomes. I was actually chatting with David Maciez, one of the top blockchain professors at Stanford, and he said something that actually really stuck with me. AI is really good, number one, at leading people astray, and number two, it is actually a symbol of mediocrity. We were at this conference and there was this really, really like lame logo and he pointed at it and he said, that logo looks really bad. It looks like it was made by AI. Whenever we say it looks like AI, we're not saying it looks great. We're saying it because we think that it's bad. I see this all the time as well in my work. I see an email and I'm like, oh, that looks like AI. It's terrible. You see those comments on Twitter and Instagram or these YouTube comments. What is going on? on. Gavin Wood, one of the co-founders of Ethereum, talks about is how delegating too much to AI can actually give it way too much power. If you are letting it write your emails, if you're letting it write your code, it could very, very subtly be changing what you actually want to say, what you actually want to do, without you really realizing it, especially if you don't know what's going on. So some stuff is obviously going to be easy to catch, like how Alex O'Connor discovered that it can't draw a full glass of wine. Of course, there is stuff that is less obvious. Or you think about rocket launches. If your calculations are off by even like 0.0001 of a degree at launch, you'll miss the moon by thousands of kilometers unless you know how to get yourself back on course. And that ultimately is going to require your brain to think. Anyway, let's put the philosophical stuff aside for one second. And I think that there are a couple of other reasons why learning how to code can also really change your life. So you've probably heard of this thing right now that's blowing up on the internet called vibe coding. Essentially anybody with zero coding experience can explain in plain language what they want to build and AI can pretty much build it. You know, I have no problem with vibe coding whatsoever. I think it's great, but ultimately what's important is also that you can understand how the code that you're writing or that AI is writing for you, the software that you're building fundamentally solves a problem that people have. In the startup world, you always need to go from prototype to production or at least 
you should always go from prototype to production because there's a massive gap between something that works and something that people actually want or something that you think people might want and something that actually works. The most successful startups do have technical founders or people who intricately understand what's going on. Even Steve Jobs, who famously didn't know how to code, did know how these things worked. And people who worked with Steve Jobs often remarked how, even though he didn't know how to code, he understood how everything worked together at a very, very deep level. And so that's why even if you're vibe coding, even if vibe coding works, you need to really understand how these things fit together. You can fix it if it breaks, but also you know which bits and levers that you can pull in your business. I recently built an app called GoDaddy and I built it on the plane from London to New York. The idea came to me and I was like, let me just build it. And I leveraged a bit of AI to help with the bits that I got stuck on. I created a prototype, but then I guided it and I had to figure out, okay, which bits are actually good? Which bits do people actually want? Which bits are useful? It doesn't replace the need to understand how to actually build solid software that actually solves a problem, right? Ideas are a dime a dozen. If ideas alone were valuable, people would just hire cheap dev teams overseas for like 10K and it would be done. Right? We'd just be churning out these products over and over again. The real value is in identifying what users actually need and then building solutions to those problems that actually work at scale. How to build software matters now more than ever. And then Jensen Huang, the co-founder and CEO of NVIDIA, one of the richest people in the world, said that writing a good prompt is very much like being a good manager. You need to give precise instructions and then it's quickly going to generate what you actually want and knowing exactly which parts need human refinement then afterwards. Software engineering itself isn't going away, but it's evolving. And that's actually great news because the opportunities might be bigger than even you realize. Like, think that anybody realizes, especially if you're willing to play at the cutting edge. So that brings me on to point four. The biggest wealth creation events happen during technological shifts. Early adopters of the internet, mobile, cloud computing, they all built empires. And it's no surprise that all the youngest billionaires in the world are technical. We're at a similar inflection point with Web3 and AI. So people are thinking, oh, junior coding jobs are threatened. And yeah, they probably are. But to be honest, only if you aren't leveraging these tools properly. And so there's actually entirely new roles for people who have the skills and the knowledge to step in. And the upside is crazy, right? And especially if you're able to do what other people don't want to do. If you're just letting your AI models and your prompts take the place of your brain, obviously you're going to go nowhere. If you're a top engineer at a company, you can make upwards of a million dollars a year. And Web3 as well, the impact is even bigger. And at EZA, of course, we're helping founders build in this space, in Web3. And I can tell you that firsthand, the demand for engineers who understand both code, blockchain, and how this all fits together, the demand far outstrips the supply right now. You will be absolutely the highest in demand in any field. In fact, you'll probably be a billionaire. Languages like Solidity, Rust, Move, you know, a lot of them are actually evolving really, really quickly. Like I'd say Move in particular, actually the AI tools aren't that great for even right now. So things like knowledge cutoffs, not enough training data, basically all of these developments are happening literally like within days or weeks. So these AI models can't really keep up, but you can, right? You can be the human that understands exactly what's going on right now, as opposed to the model that knew what happened a year ago. So in 2025, it is still worth learning how to code, but not in the same way as before. But learning the fundamentals and learning how to build software is always going to be valuable. How to build a product. And the people who are gonna win in the big technological shifts, they will always be and have always been the people who position themselves right at that pinnacle. They leverage new technologies in ways that most people can't even understand. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Think about people who are around even 20 years ago, maybe even a couple of years ago, if they didn't know about AI, they think the stuff that is going on right now is magical. It's absolutely magic. Look, in the world, we're always going to need builders. We're always going to need people who can solve problems. Because unfortunately, there are so many problems in the world. I don't think that they're going away anytime soon. We're going to need people like you who are going to push technology to the next level. And that's precisely what learning how to code and learning how to build software can help us to do.